everybody. It's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and I have another interview with another very interesting person. And this is Mary Jo, and she has a YouTube channel that is called So Jo Quilty Stitchy Things. And I am going to talk to Mary Jo a little bit later on in the interview about her YouTube channel, and there will be a link for it at the, in the show notes for this interview. But right off the bat, Mary Jo, um, where are you located in general? I am located in Ohio, kind of in the southwest quadrant of Ohio. Okay, great. Um, you probably know Stephanie Stitches then. <laughs> I know of her channel. I yes, don't know, know her channel. Like, yes, yes. <laughs> it's like saying in Canada, someone comes over here from Britain and says, oh, I've got a cousin in Edmonton. Uh, I live outside of Toronto. We're quite a little <laughs> way. And, you know, there's a lot of people here in Canada. There's just not three of us. <laughs> But I digress. So let's start right in with how long have you been quilting? Well, I'd like to say I've been quilting about 10 years, um, but I've been sewing for about 15-ish, I would say. Okay, so um, what were you sewing before you got into quilting? Clothing or? Yeah, I was sewing garments. Um, I was sewing for da my daughter because I started sewing when my daughter was not quite three and I had a son that wasn't quite one at the time <laughs> just before he turned one and my daughter turned three I started sewing garments and I was sewing you know pajamas and dresses for my daughter and myself and then it kind of led to quilting but even before that I mean I don't consider it my first quilt but I did make a puff quilt even before my children oh, okay. so so I've a couple them. years to make <laughs> yes okay I can understand that especially if it's your first one um, so what got you in, into quilting then? What inspired you to do quilting? I'm not really sure. Um, I was sewing, like I said, I was sewing dresses. I was sh sewing all the time. Um, I really enjoyed sewing. And then I was also crocheting. I crochet a lot. And my husband one day told me I needed to stop crocheting because we had too many blankets. So kind of <laughs> as a joke, I said, okay, I stopped crocheting and then I took up quilting. He's <laughs> never told me to stop doing anything again. Well, you know, crocheting uh, an afghan or a blanket or something like that is, is different from quilting. That's for sure. I know I've crocheted as well in my past too. But uh, okay, so did you have anybody in your family that quilted then? Well, I grew up with my mom sewing. My mom sewed all the time. She said she made quilts, but I don't really remember it. I only remember her making one quilt that was a panel that was cut up that she added some borders to. And that is the only quilt I ever remember her making. But she did sew all the time. So I was around the fabric. I was around, you know, the right. the machine and all that stuff. But I don't actually remember her quilting. <laughs> <laughs> so. I guess then was there, there wasn't anybody in your family then that maybe was a direct influence on your quilting. It was more of the direct influence of just sewing in general uh, kind of thing. Yeah. So you didn't have any grandparents or anything like that that yeah. uh, quilted? It? So you're basically a first generation quilter, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, in a way. It, it was funny because after I started quilting, my mom got back into quilting because like i said she said she quilted but i just don't remember that so so you got your mother back into it okay well that's yeah. great um so what's your favorite creation and why now this is a trick question um <laughs> i'm looking at that beautiful piece right behind you and uh but that doesn't necessarily have to be your favorite we're going to talk about that one in a second but do you have a favorite because you know most people will say to me well my favorite's whatever one i'm working on now kind of a thing what about you well i have several favorites my actual favorite type of quilt to piece is a bargello as behind me those are my absolute favorite to piece but as far as the favorite I've done, I mean, I have a few. They usually involve my kids. I made a Pokemon quilt for my son. Um, that was a free pattern. And I have one for my daughter that I used the different pieces and scraps that I had from the dresses I'd made her and put that into a quilt. And I also have a library quilt that I made for my daughter because she's loved books. She's always reading. And then I have one that I made for my husband um, that he kind of picked out with me at an Amish quilt store. 
So those are probably like my favorite quilts, but my all time favorite quilt to piece are definitely Bargellos. Yeah, and I can see that the one behind you is definitely a Bargello. I've done a couple of Bargellos, but nothing as um, intricate or I don't know what to, to say, complex. It's just jumping right out at me. I just love the design. I, and I, I'm not really a fan of green, but the way you've used green in this works really, really well. So how long did this quilt take you to make? I don't remember. It's actually been in a tub, kind of folded up for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't really remember. And I'm not a green fan either. I am I go more blues. Blues are like my favorite color. However, this, for whatever reason, I did the green. I don't know if it's because the pattern wasn't green. So I stuck with the green. But but yes, I, I absolutely love this. And and I love the shape that the Bargellos are making. It, it is reminiscent to me, maybe because of the green and those shapes. They look like ornaments, Christmas tree ornaments. So this one would be a great uh, and different Christmas uh, quilt, too. I don't know if that was in your mind at the time. Um, no. <laughs> but it, it is, I just, I find it just fascinating because I don't think I've ever seen one quite in that design, like with the Bargello like that. So, yeah. That one I'm sure did take you a while to do, and I am sure you probably have a few horror stories about it as as well. Um, or I not. don't really remember any horror stories with well, this good. one. I I really don't. I guess that we just wipe out our our problems with things when we get the final product if if we're really happy with it. Well, that is well done. Um, I've shied away from Bargellos, but now looking, but I've done a couple, but nothing like this. And now I'm looking at this and thinking, hmm, maybe sometime. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so as a quilter then, how would you describe yourself? And this is a hard question. Are you traditional? Do you lean towards the more traditional blocks? Are you more modern? Are you freeform, eclectic? You know? <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I think like everybody, I'm a mix, but if I'd have to pick one, I'd probably go more traditional. I mean, I, I, I but traditional, even saying traditional, there's more subcategories in traditional. Cause I would say my mom's more of a traditional quilter, but she goes more primitive civil war type thing. And I tend to stay away from those. So I guess traditional, but a different kind of traditional than other traditionals. <laughs> well, that's why the question's an unfair question because I'm yeah. asking you to pigeonhole yourself and you just said it. We can't really be pigeonholed because it's whatever grabs us at the time, you know. Uh, there may be a traditional pattern we like and we'll go for that. But then there'll be maybe something more modern. We'll go for that. It really depends on what's grabbing us at the time. Um, I would almost say that just looking at the Bargello, that you lean towards modern, even though Bargello has been around for a while. It's just, it, it's always got a modern feel, I think, the Bargello because of the abstractness of it. It does, but um, one of my favorite quilting stores is an Amish quilting store and store, and they have Bargellos in there all the time. And I think Amish is a traditional mm -hmm. quilting. So I'm like, well, if Amish can kind of go the Bargello, then maybe Bargello is traditional. But again, it's trying to, fit that into a category that I don't know maybe yeah. well that's why I said it's an unfair question uh with it now in Ohio you're pretty much in Amish country as well so I imagine you see a lot of uh quilts around that might be of inspiration or whatever or do you well where I'm at I don't see a lot of a lot of Amish hmm. um but I mean occasionally you do won't say you never see them occasionally you do um but the quilt shop I go it's about two hours north of me and then I and there's Amish all around up there so I mean you do see quilts and different things up through there a lot so yeah, true well we we don't live in Mennonite country and the Mennonites of course um, I I'm always have to be careful with this because I don't yeah. know how close Mennonites are to Amish and, and the whole bit or whether it is a branch away or whatever. But the Mennonites do have, you know, they're famous for their quilts in our sort of our area. They're two hours away from me. But you always have this this view that those people are doing something more traditional because they tend to be a little bit more 
for lack of a better word, more conservative, more um, old fashioned, at least in our mind. And so when you Less see technological, things, yes, exactly. But you know, it's not a lot of technology in quilting. I mean, a sewing machine, you know, and you could do it by hand if you had to. Uh, well, I wouldn't, but because there'd be blood, but um, <laughs> you know, you can in the whole bit. But yeah, we don't think of theirs as being, you know, more up to date. But yeah, there's nothing saying they can't do that uh, either. I would find it very inspiring. I think if I lived down in that area, I'd be going around wanting to see all of the Amish quilts and things like that. So I'm assuming you're in your work area. So can you describe it? Can you describe it? Is it a, a small room, a large room? How do you have it set up? Well, this was our former dining room, which it's no longer a dining room. <laughs> However, I still do have a couple dining room pieces in here because I have nowhere else to put them. Right. Um, so if you turn that way, I've got my big window. Let's see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lots of natural light. That's nice. At my window. Yeah. <laughs> and then we go over here to the sewing machine. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and around. And then back over there is the fabric, which I'm not going to show you because it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, who's isn't really uh, with that? Well, you know, that's kind of a nice space. And, you know, a lot of people I hear say they convert their dining rooms over to a sewing space because in this day and age, how many do we need a dining room? I don't know. I never use my dining room either but it's not my sewing space, but you know, it's, it's the same kind of thing. So it's nice to have your own space. Now, having said that, do you have a favorite tool that you reach for all the time? Not, not your sewing I would have to Talk about that. <laughs> I would have to say my favorite thing is the strophology ruler. Mm, with the slats. You mean, yeah, mm -hmm. I a couple of those. I love them. Yep. You want to strip, you want to do some strip cutting. Those are the best things for it. I find. That's why I have two, because I broke one, but <laughs> it cracked. Um, so let's talk a little, though, about your sewing machine. So uh, what brand of sewing machine do you use? I use a Baby Lock. Okay. Um, I have two Baby Locks. I have a Baby Lock Soprano and a Baby Lock Accomplish. Yeah, and I was just going to ask you how many machines you have, because I know there are very few quilters that have one machine. <laughs> it just doesn't happen that way. Now, Baby Lock, I know, are very popular in the United States, um, more readily available than for us in Canada. If you hear of someone here that has a Baby Lock, then you, well, that's a rarity. They probably went to the States <laughs> and got it. I mean, there are some places where you can buy them, but not as many as some of the other brands. But uh, now, when it comes to quilting your quilts, do you do them on your domestic machines or do you have a long arm or do you send them out? No, I am. Um... I share a long arm with my mom. Now the long arm is at my parents' house in the basement. So, I mean, it's not here at my house, but I do have a long arm that I use. Okay, so that's good. So how long have you been doing, uh, working on a long arm? I was thinking about this earlier. I wanna say maybe 2018 is okay. when we got the long arm. So recent, relatively recently to that. And, uh, and it's at your mother's place. Well, that's, is she close by? She lives about 30 minutes away. Okay, so. that's not bad. Yeah. So that's nice that you have access to a, a long arm for that. And do you do you have a computerized system on it or do you do everything by pantograph or free motion? Pantograph or free motion. It, it, yeah, it's not computerized. Yeah, well, more power to you. <laughs> <laughs> because that takes a lot of practice, especially the free motion. I know I have a long arm. I haven't had it as long as uh, as you've had yours. Um, but I have a computer on mine and I love the computer, but I'm all about tech. So <laughs> it suits my, it suits my uh, personality when it comes to quilting. So um, if you had though, all the money in the world, is there a piece of equipment that you would invest in? Um, absolutely. I would, the long arm we use now is a gamble. Um, but if I had all the money in the world, I would definitely buy a computerized gamble and I would need somewhere to put it. So we would b build a big old barn in our acreage where part of it would be my quilting studio. There would be the top floor would be for my husband's office and 3D printing. And then the other part of the 
the uh, barn would be for my husband to fiddle with whatever he wants in. Yep, See? that sounds like ideal. I mean, I think that's that's the two things that most people say when I ask this question. They'd buy a long arm and they want more space and would like. And a lot of people talk about having a whole separate building as a studio, mm -hmm. which would be really nice. Yeah, for yes. sure. Agree with that dream. That's for sure. So. Uh, changing our thought pattern here a little bit, have you ever belonged to any kind of guilds or in-person groups or even online groups? And how did that go for you if you did? I belonged to a guild at one time. I no longer belong to that guild. Um, it, I really liked going and learning about the different speakers and different things they would had. Um, but for me, the drawback was is a lot of the times it was focused about okay people bringing actual food and stuff i'm not i'm not a cook okay. I, I can quilt but i'm not a cook so it, it just you know and plus i had young children i'd be home trying to get them homework cook dinner i don't have time to make another dinner for people at a quilt guild when i'm going for for quilting and um i would rather scrub toilets than cook anyway so <laughs> <laughs> So that kind of became a big deterrent for me. Right. Yeah. And uh, I find, too, I used to belong to a guild. I don't anymore. Um, I just find it it's hard to find one that fits you. You know, yes. it's not just a question of showing up and it's a whole group of people and listening to speakers. There is a yeah. vibe or an atmosphere, you know, well, and, it, that's and, if true it too. and, you know, if it doesn't work with you, it doesn't work with you. So. I'm really enjoying online communities, uh, especially since COVID when we had to do yeah. a lot of that. And, you know, Zoom has been a godsend as far as I'm concerned. I've embraced that technology. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, if, if you were going out and searching, actively searching for a guild, do you have much of a selection of guilds in your area or was that one that you talked about pretty much it? That's the only one I know of. Now, there may be others, but that was the only one that I know of. And I know there's lots online now. I have not searched for those online, but I do know they're available. And um, that may be something I do in the future is to see about an online thing. Because like I said, cooking, I'd rather scrub toilets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'd rather do neither. I'd rather quilt. <laughs> kind of thing. That's true. So speaking of online uh, things and that, are you, um, do you go to any experts online, experts as in people that you like to follow that you maybe gleaned more knowledge about, uh, or you go to when you're having a problem, want to see how does this person do it? Well, on YouTube, you can look up anything on YouTube. It doesn't necessarily have to be an expert, but um, the people that when I first started quilting that kind of led me was number one was Eleanor Burns. I found Eleanor Burns and I just, I thought she was amazing and I really liked her attitude and spunk and her sassiness. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Anybody and then know? after Eleanor Burns, it was Jenny Doan and mm -hmm. then Kimberly Jolly and Jordan and Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. But those would probably be the ones that if I have an issue, I would look to see if they have some sort of help somewhere first. Yeah, they're really the biggies on there. Yes. I think all of us have gone to them at one time or another. When I first got into quilting, yeah, Jenny Doan and Donna Jordan were two that I immediately went to. And the other ones you mentioned as well, I've checked those all out as well. And yeah, when I need to know something, they're the ones I'll turn to first because, yeah, usually they know what they're doing. <laughs> usually, always, it seems. <laughs> So what about your materials? Do you live anywhere near uh, a quilt store or do you buy a lot online or do you do sort of a half and half kind of thing? I do both. Um, like I said, my favorite one's two hours away. So that's quite a journey um, sometimes. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's it's the one the one I like. I do have some that are closer. Um, they're smaller. Um, of course, I like online stuff and I buy a lot of stuff from Fat Quarter Shop and Missouri stars. So, I mean, it's just kind of a mix of everywhere. Yeah. You're, you're very lucky that you live where you live because getting <laughs> stuff from Missouri star and from the fat quarter shop and that is, is not as horrendous as it is trying to get that tier in Canada because one, the price change, well, <laughs> because of our dollar sucks. So uh, next to the American dollar and then the shipping is shipping. just, 
yeah. astronomical and getting it across the border and you never know whether you're going to pay duty on it or not. It, it, it is horrendous. So I really envy the variety of shopping that Americans can do online because we don't we have lots of stores that are online in Canada, uh, but it's just not quite the same <laughs> as, as what you have to choose from. So that's nice. Now, let's go and talk about your YouTube channel. And as I said, your YouTube channel is called uh, So So Joe, and it's S E W So Joe Quilty Stitchy Things. That's a mouthful. I, it is a tongue tripper almost. But uh, so, when did you start this, and why did you start it? Well, I started it just because I sew. I sew all the time. So first of all, Sojo isn't just from my name, Mary Jo. It's because when people talk about Sojo, how they lost their Sojo, it's like, well, I've always seemed to have the Sojo in abundance. So the Sojo kind of came from that. And why I started it is just kind of to share what I do and um, to make friends. I don't really have a lot of friends that quilt. <laughs> and yeah. so I'm like, hey, I think this is a good way to show what I do and kind of meet people. and network that way i so don't I, have a business associated with my channel in any way it's just me <laughs> and and when did you did you say i don't know if i caught it when you started it how long have you had it up one month i started on january 21st i newbie okay yes. <laughs> great um i love doing helping out people with they're just getting started in the medium because i figure there's room for us all there and the more the better uh, with it so that's great so if someone goes to your channel then right now what can they expect is it tutorials is it unboxings is it chatting <laughs> well I've had some unboxings I'm also in the process of doing a trunk show my 200 plus quilt top trunk show because I've accumulated a lot of quilt tops that need completed so I've been doing a multi-series part on my quilt tops that I have. I've been pulling them all out and doing a trunk show. I do a weekly update where I show everything that I've completed. And it's not just quilting. I also have cross stitch, crochet, and some diamond painting on there too. And I show everything that I've done for the week. Um, I plan on doing some sew alongs here in the future. Haven't got there yet, but I will. I've only been doing it a month. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it's True. definitely been a, a, a different experience for me because I'm more of an introvert. So <laughs> this is definitely a change. <laughs> True. But it sounds like you've got like a, a nice variety of things because it's not just quilting. You have the cross stitch you said, you have the diamond painting. Uh, as well. So is there something there for a wider audience as well, which is nice, you know, because most quilters do do other things as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you yes. know, we're, we're just not a, a, a one act pony kind of a thing uh, going on. Now, you've said that you're, you're maybe going to do some sew alongs and that. Have you thought about doing any kind of lives? I, I've thought about it. I haven't come to a decision that kind of like scares me a little bit. <laughs> With not, it was just the technology and that kind of stuff. I'm I'm not exactly sure about that one yet. And you know, who knows what's possible in the future? I will never say no, but we'll we'll sure. see. <laughs> well, you're you're right. The technology can be a little overwhelming, although it's not that bad once you once you get into it, kind <laughs> of a thing. But um, the reason I asked you that question too, because a lot of uh, YouTube creators who are doing quilting in that um, do have sew alongs, but they do, uh, many of them have gone to the live route as well. And I think yes. that goes back to the idea of a, creating a community, you know, the idea that mm -hmm. we're kind of replacing in-person guilds with our own groups in a, in this format, in, in a video format as well. Um, so I, do you have any challenges or goals for the future, maybe for your YouTube channel, but also for you personally in, in your quilting journey? Uh, question. None, none that I can think of at the moment. It's just kind of doing what I like when I want and let's see what happens. I mean, it's right. kind of where I'm at. I mean, I think just even starting this channel was a huge goal that I'm in the process of working on. Um, so, and just seeing where that leads. Yeah, true. It, and it is a big undertaking uh, to do a, a channel as well. And that's, again, why I do these interviews, because I don't, I don't interview to Jenny Dones in the world. I like to 
average people. I consider myself average. Oh, and one other thing that you mentioned, and I have a pet peeve with this. Everybody that I have interviewed, and when I ask the question about the YouTube channel, all tell me they're introverts. Every <laughs> one of them said, and you want to know something? I am in that category as well. I would say that about myself too. But you know, we are not introverts. <laughs> we, we just say that because we don't want to blow uh, air in our sails for ourselves. You know I, I think. I, I'm pretty much an introvert. I, I, I need to live here in my house. And <laughs> Well, what I have to say to you about that, and I say it to everybody that says they're an introvert and they've got a YouTube channel, get over that. You're not. <laughs> You're doing fine. So uh, not to worry. So um, is there any any other things that uh, you would like to say uh, right now about that we haven't really covered in the questions that you'd like us to know? Um, now you're putting me on the spot. None that I can think of at the moment. Um, I do want to say thanks for having me on and giving mm -hmm. me this opportunity. Don't you be leaving me yet. I have one I'm more question you for you. I know. Thanks. I have one more question for you. Now, do you have any advice for anyone that wants to get started in the quilting? The advice I'd probably say is just mistakes will happen. Sometimes you learn to embrace them. Sometimes you learn to fix them and you just go from there, but they will happen. For sure. And it doesn't matter. I have found it doesn't matter how long anybody's been quilting for. You're still going to make the mistakes. And yep. that's okay. That's okay. Because don't get too uptight, as you said. You know, it's supposed to be fun, really. Yeah. When it stops being fun, move on to something else. <laughs> kind of a thing. So, yeah, and in my weekly updates, I, I point out the mistakes and how I fixed them or if I'm not going to fix them. Because I think it's important to to know. I mean, so what if I cut off a point? It's not going to be noticeable once it's quilted. So it doesn't matter. Right. That that's right. It's better. What's the expression? Better done than perfect, or something like that. Yes. Yeah, I kind of live by that creed too. I mean, a little point here or there. Well, it happens. So what? And if somebody points it out to you that there's a mistake, and they're a friend, they're not a friend anymore. A friend <laughs> will overlook that. <laughs> with them. It depends on when they point it out. Because I remember I showed a quilt top on a weekly update a couple weeks ago. And then when I was looking at the video back, I was like, oh, that block's turned. But at that point in time, it's perfectly fine to go back and turn it because, you know, rips, rip right. it out and fix it because it wasn't in a quilt. So if that point, if they point it out at that point, that's fine. But when it's in a finished quilt, it's like. Yeah, that's uh, state. <laughs> a customization at that point. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it was it was a design choice. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's our story and we're sticking to it. So. Exactly. So, well, I want to thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. And uh, as I said, I will put your information for your YouTube channel in the show notes so you can get some more people to check you out because it's definitely worth watching your videos. I'm a subscriber. I'm enjoying what you're putting up very much so, and I'm looking forward to what you have in the future as well. So, yeah, thank you so much, Mary Jo, for this interview. It was great. And just stay on the line as I finish up here. But um, yeah. I, I hope you have a, a great day and you make something beautiful, which I'm sure you will uh, with that. So thanks again. Thank you.